So I recently had a great question from a viewer about calculating the middle index between two indexes, let's say a left and a right index, in an array in C. So they asked, why can't we just calculate the middle index with L plus R divided by two? In my video for the binary search algorithm, I had L plus R minus L divided by two. And there's actually a reason why it's better to do it that way, even though it's longer and it involves an extra calculation. Let's go over why this is the case. So both approaches will calculate the middle index between a left and a right index successfully. So if we have an array with the elements from zero to nine, we could have a left index of let's say five and a right index of let's say nine. And the middle index between five and nine would be seven. We can calculate it with either approach. So we'll have int middle one is equal to L plus R divided by two. And we can have int middle two is equal to L plus R minus L divided by two. And then we'll print out middle one and middle two. And we'll find that in both cases, we get seven. So I'll have middle one percent D and I'll output middle one and then printf middle two percent D backslash N and I'll output middle two. And we can save, compile, and run our program. And middle one and middle two are both seven. So both calculations are correct in terms of calculating the middle. But this approach here is less prone to integer overflow than this approach here. So what is integer overflow and why does that matter? So int variables can only store numbers that are so large. There's actually a constant int max that gives us the max number that an int variable can store. So if we include limits.h, we can access the int underscore max constant. And we'll print out what int underscore max is. We'll have int underscore max colon percent d backslash n, and we'll output int underscore max. We can save, compile, and run this. And we see that the max int value is about 2 billion. So we can store numbers up to about 2 billion into an int variable. If we try to store a number that's larger than int underscore max into an int variable, we're going to get an integer overflow and something like a negative number will end up being stored in the int variable because it just can't store a number that large. Now the issue here is that with this first approach, we have L plus R. If L and R are both very large numbers, we could have integer overflow occur. So let's make a very, very massive array. We'll make an array so large that we actually have to dynamically allocate memory for it. So we'll include stdlib.h so we can use malloc to dynamically allocate memory. And we'll make a massive car array on the heap. We'll say car star massive is equal to malloc and we'll allocate space for 2 billion cars. So this is a massive car array. And then down here, we'll free it. So we'll have free massive. And we're creating this array on the heap because an array this large usually won't work on the stack. We usually get an error. So let's try to make L and R very large numbers now. So instead of five, we'll set L to 1.5 billion. We'll have one five, and then we'll put enough zeros here to make it 1.5 billion. With R, we're going to make it 1.9 billion. So we'll have one nine, and then again, we're gonna put enough zeros here to make it 1.9 billion. So the issue with this first approach is that we're going to have 1.5 billion plus 1.9 billion. That's going to give us 3.4 billion, which is outside the range of what an int can store. We're going to have an integer overflow occur and middle one will actually store some incorrect negative number. With this approach here, we're not gonna have that problem because we first have R minus L. We're gonna take 1.9 billion and subtract 1.5 billion. That's going to give us 400 million. We're going to divide that by two. That's going to give us 200 million. Then we're going to add to that 1.5 billion and we'll get 1.7 billion. And we never have an integer overflow occur with the second approach. We could actually set in the massive array at the index 1.7 billion, a value that we could check for. So we'll just set at that index, the value Y. 
the car uppercase Y. And then we'll check for that after we've calculated middle two. So down here, we'll also print out the value in the massive array at that index middle two. So we'll have percent D and percent C and we'll output middle two for the index and massive at middle two for the value. And we can save, compile, and run our program. And we see that middle one is a negative number because this L plus R here caused an integer overflow. But middle two is 1.7 billion. And that's because the way we went about this calculation prevents the integer overflow from occurring. And we do get the correct value in the array at that 1.7 billion index. So this here is a more robust approach to calculating the middle index between two indexes in an array. And even though it seems a bit funny to use it because it involves an extra calculation, we use it because it can prevent integer overflow errors from occurring. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.